are you? Hey, Rose, good to see you, my friend. It's it been a while. Been, it has, it has. <laughs> Such a long time. So mm -hmm. welcome to another episode of Casting Notes from Rose and Kim. And this is Kim Swanson. She's a esteemed casting director in Los Angeles. And I'm Rose Rosen, somewhat of an- casting director in Florida. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, good to see you. How are you? I'm great. Great. It's a beautiful sunny day here in LA, so I'm not going to complain, you know? It's, well, uh, uh, you know, here we are in Florida and Los Angeles. The world right, is not right. happy with us. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I love my Midwest roots and growing up in the Midwest and, you know, and I love being back at Christmas and having a little snow and things, but like it, come January, February, March, like, I don't miss it. I talked to my dad the other day. It was minus three there. So no. Wow. That's yeah. <laughs> like I don't miss that. I had I had plenty of years of that. I don't miss it, you know. Um, oh but, you know. So we have a guest, but, today. you know, everything in life. You know, what? What, what? What were you saying? I was gonna say everything in life. You know, we have these hurdles, and you know, and which is perfect for our guest to talk about today because he's amazing, and you don't have this kind of longevity without having faced a lot of hurdles and rejection, right? So Right, right. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Anyway, I think he's here some way. Where Wesley, you're Hello. Here there you are. are. Hi. Hi Wesley. Hi How Rose. Hi Kim. Hi. All the way from Palm Springs, right? <laughs> yes, I'm exhausted. Boy, are my arms tired. But uh <laughs> everybody's snowed there. in and it's like 80 degrees here so i know right i we're we're very fortunate what can i say it's it's a good life but it is a great life nice to see you looking great thanks and thanks for having me on i appreciate it uh, yeah yeah no Leslie yeah. has such and for those of you who aren't familiar has such an amazing and varied background in the industry so really Wesley, would you tell our viewers how you got started? Like give them this like the, the little short, um, you know, Cliff Notes version of how you got started in the biz? Sure, I, I started as an oak tree in a, in a, in, when I was five years old in a play. And, and from there I grew roots. I mean, it's been amazing. <laughs> That's but, it, you know, that I, is. I, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, when, I was, when I was like five years old in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, I stood up one day and, and my family were all educators. Nobody's in the entertainment business. And I sort of said, I'm going to be an actor. And they go, oh boy, is this guy creepy. And they just, but you know, you just have to be, I was determined. And, and my whole life was focused. Every school play I could get into, every community theater I would get into, any opportunity. We moved to Las Vegas because uh, my mom was heading up the drug abuse program for the state of Nevada. Mm. And I studied it, you know, in, in, in high school and then I you know I, I I I met everybody you could on the strip and got a job with Robert Goulet and Carol Lawrence driving a mobile home wow. on the east coast for the Goober Gross they were circuit back in the day they were doing I do I do the play oh, wow. musical and I was their driver I was 17 years old and it got me to New York and instead of going back to college the second year at UNLV I called home said mom I'm staying in New York wow. and it takes that kind of chutzpah yeah. You know, now, you know, the world has changed with the internet and with, with social media that some people can become stars by doing their YouTube channels without going through any of the drama. Hello. <laughs> We're making you a star right now, Wesley. <laughs> really? I'm so excited. Oh my God, I'm finally going to have a career. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> this is your moment. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Well, you know, the most important thing for actors to know, and it's really, really, it's the number one rule, is you must, and this is, listen to me carefully, you must suck up to the casting directors. <laughs> that is the number one rule to become a successful actor. So okay. can I... Can, can I give you a back rub? You need chocolates. What do you guys need? Just let me know. All of it. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we do say we don't accept gifts and all this right. other stuff, but from you, whatever you want is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you're Thank you're you. different. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little about how, like, like how many um, auditions it takes to get your roles. What would you say to a young actor now? Um, you know, if, if, you know, thinking back of your career and what would you say to them trying to get into the business? Well, first, the number one, really the number one rule is you have to really want it. It's got to be a passion that's just burning inside of you. 
And like if people say to you, uh, you should be an actor. Oh my God, everybody tells me I should be a performer. If you don't tell yourself you should be a performer, then don't do it. Because there's gonna be so much heartache. There's gonna be so much rejection. You know, you, and it's not easy when, when a casting, when you hear that a casting director said, oh, he's too old or he, he's too ugly or his hair is wrong or he's too fat or whatever. And I've had that happen before with different, you know, different things. Um, I remember when I, I got, uh, I was hosting a game show for Nickelodeon called Finders Keepers, which was their number one show for two years. And when I auditioned for the thing, I, my agent got a call and says, we'd like to give him the part, but could he lose at least 10 pounds? It's like those kind of things. I mean, uh, I was on my first set of my first, we were shooting a, it was a show called The Organic Vegetables with Kay Ballard. I was the lead singer drummer. It was produced by the guys that produced the monkeys. And, and I remember I go, they had a, a crafts the buffet out there and I go for a donut. And one of the producers goes, excuse me, do you really want to eat that? <gasps> oh my God. So yeah, no, it, it is an odd, it's an odd business where there's so much privilege if you make it, but there's so much sadness sometimes. And you really have to have a thick skin and go, okay, you know, they, they don't get me. You know, because the truth is, you know, when you walk into a room, if you're the right person, the casting directors know it, there's an energy, they, you know, and you just have to realize you're not being compared to other people. It's just about you. And that's a really hard lesson to learn that we're not, that yet you're not really competing with everybody in that room. It's yourself, it's your persona, and it's your drive, or whatever that magical thing is. You know, everybody talks about the it factor. And that's what, all, all, you know, I've cast shows and I've directed shows and I've acted in shows. And we all know that feeling when somebody walks in and you go, that's the person. That's it. It's, and the director my doesn't favorite always story, agree, but. My, my favorite casting story is, um, is about uh, the Fonz on Happy Days, Henry Winkler. Right. Okay, I, if you guys, I know you're your old Nicest enough, guy. Exactly, well, the Fonz yeah. in, the, in the script was written he was this kind of, uh, he was a rough and tough guy, you know, a big, tall, rough and tough oh. guy. And the and his agent called and said, listen, I've got a guy, He, you know, he's only five foot seven, right? but he plays six foot tall. <laughs> and Henry went in and nailed it. It was not at all what they were looking for. Yeah, but that's a story about an agent working for their client. Which, exactly. I mean, yeah. You know, you, and also you, being very aware of what their talent are capable of. That, that they knew that they sent him that room, the casting director was in a call and go, what the heck were you thinking? That was a disaster. It was awful. Like the, right. the talent, you know, that Henry Winkler had, he obviously worked on it, honed it and made it known what he was capable of. So his agent had information to work with too. He plays Absolutely. Absolutely. What a tag. But again, it's a, it can be a very bruising business. And you know, and, and I'll tell you something, I, I was lucky early. I, I, got, I got my first TV series when I moved to LA within a week and a half. Wow. Uh, on an open call. And I went on open call. I was not a union member of Screen Actors Guild or, or after. And I went on an open call and I got cast. Um, and then I got perfect. my second show, I got my second series right after that, Days of Our Lives for 10 years. And then Land of the Lost, I got, within a month of being on, on, on Days of Our Lives and did both series together. But I mean, I was lucky, but, but there's another side to this. Once you become an actor and be established, there is the downside when it all begins to fall apart and no one's calling anymore. So there's, and that is, how do, how do you keep yourself going you know, after you've had some success and you think, well, I, I, I look at me and look at what I've done. But, but you, you're back in the trenches fighting. So even, even the most successful actors, and I know some of them with major movies, are still struggling and still have to have that desire, still have to have that fire burning in them to really want to audition and go out even when they've had success before. So it doesn't end when you get major success. It's an ongoing process and it's, it's really just a way of life. And it's a life you have to commit to if you really want to be there. I think it's so funny when you see actors submit, especially when they self-submit and they do this, I just want to like reach the screen and smack them on the head. And they say, you know, offer only. And I'm thinking, do you realize I've auditioned actors like shortly after they won an Oscar, they yes. come in and audition because they want to read for you. They want to show you they're right for the part. 
like, you know, and there's an old saying, you know, luck is a funny thing. The harder I work, the luckier I get. Right. You know, you're and, absolutely and right. Yeah. You know, the, the people who are at the top 99.9% .9 of the time, it really had to do with hard work way more than luck. Well, one, one of the best stories was uh, Betty Davis, who, uh, it, it, you know, was, was at one time one of the greatest actors in American theater. She was so successful, had all these awards, everything, and she couldn't get a job. Not a job. She put an ad in the Variety in Los Angeles says, uh, Oscar winning actress looking for work. <laughs> Brilliant. And, and because nobody, everybody was going, oh, I want a Betty Davis type. And she's going, well, call me. Just call right. Betty. Call you know, Betty because nobody was calling Davis anymore. Right. So it's, it, it, it's an interesting thing. I mean, it, it starts, you need to have that fire when you want it, to, when it's burning inside of you. And you need to keep that fire, those embers flamed and, and, and aired a bit. So they keep burning. Right. But that's you, true of the, every, every aspect, everybody in the industry, maybe even everybody in any business, you really have to keep engaging and changing and evolving so that people yeah. are interested in hiring you. Whether you're an accountant, a casting director, an actor, or a makeup artist, there's right. new things that come in to mm -hmm. every profession all the time. You have to stay sharp and you have to look alive, you know? And, and I think, I think, and you have to, like Betty Davis, let people know that you're still alive. <laughs> well, and, right, and Wesley, you're okay. such a great example of someone who's morphed and, and didn't get so laser targeted that right. this is all I can do in the industry because you've written, you've directed, you've produced, you've created. So, so give our audience some sense of the other things you've done within the industry besides your acting career, which is admirable in itself. Right. Thanks. I mean, besides a lot of movie, in fact, I have a new movie coming out with William Shatner. But uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I have a new show that I created. Uh, exam, exec, executive, I can't even talk. I do, I do, I do, I do. And that's the other thing is learn to speak because if you can't, let me, let me, <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> that's why I never worked later. Anyway, so I've, been, I've, been a, I've just sold a new series of reality show I'm an executive produced, but I used to write and direct uh, Totally Hit Video for Fox. And it was the best job I ever had because I, I would, they call me in and, and I was a segment writer and producer and stuff. So I'd write some of the, you know, it was hidden camera, like candid camera, but it was meaner. And I would write these bits. Sometimes I'd go direct them, but the best thing was I would cast myself in the roles that I wanted. I was always the waiter in the restaurant really? setting up the people. So, uh, but you know, I, I've done, a, I've done a lot of, a lot of that sort of thing, writing. And I, ha I have five books out that I've written. Uh, one that Disney's bought for an animated feature. Uh, you know, great. I created Dragon Tales on PBS, a co-creator with uh, three other people, and you know, it, you 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 just have to keep alive and do it. And the and and times change, tastes right. change. Right. You know what they're looking for now is not what they were looking for years ago. If you look at commercials today, for instance, it used to be all pretty people. You had to be really pretty to be in Hollywood. Right. Look at commercials now. It's there's more everyday men. There's more okay. everyday women. There's uh, it's not all, all the pencil thin ladies again. There's Zoftic and, you know, there's a celebration of who we all are. So don't limit yourself as a performer. You know, you go, oh, well, I'm not pretty. I don't, I don't look like, you know, like that wonderful, beautiful actress. Go, wait a minute. You are who you are. And there is a spot for you if you have that drive. Right. So that's really important to love yourself and really acknowledge who you are and go out there and just go, okay. And if they don't like me now, they'll like me the next door. I'll walk in that next door and they'll go to me. And we right. just say as casting directors, please just let us know what you look like now. <laughs> Not what you look like 10 exactly. years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and be yourself. You, yeah. Because there's, there's, there, there's one thing that no one else that can come in the room can do is be like you. Right. Right. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. the one thing we guarantee is going to be unique in your performance is you. And so, so run with that, use it, you know, wherever yes, you are I, with your bounds or your wrinkles, it doesn't matter. We want to embrace see you. it. So embrace you don't think I should, when I walk in a room now, I just do this. Hello. <laughs> well, I, I like to do this a lot. Yeah. Don't you know who I used to be? <laughs> Listen, oh, I got to. No, it's going downhill fast. <laughs> Lucy, <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, Let's Lucy, take a picture. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Lucille Ball which is my favorite story. Lucy Ball, I actually got to work with Lucy. I, I, I taught her how to play Password. I was, a, I was a regular on Password 
the game show and match game and things like that. But and, but every photo she took after the age of 50, and, and you can go look, you can Google it. Every photo was this. Every one of them. <laughs> she would talk like this and this and stuff like that. <laughs> it was like self airbrushing is what it yeah. was. Well, it's, it's better that way, you know, you can't trust the airbrushers, let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> She's marketing for her day. I mean, back at that point in time, it was about being young and beautiful and slender and glamorous. It was. And she, she knew the market and what they needed at that time. But she right. was size 12. So was Marilyn. But of course, they weren't today's size 12. That's a whole other discussion. Right. But, but, <laughs> but, today, but today, you know, with casting, it's so nice because, because they're, you know, they're, 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 it's now open to, to different races, to different genders, right? to different, you know, it, the world has opened up. They're, you know, they're looking for more, you know, there's the, the more Hispanics and African-Americans and what Asians everything. and stuff, which before it was like the ceiling, they couldn't push up. And now it's it, it's bursting open, which is such a wonderful blessing because now we're actually seeing our population represented on television right. in the movies for, for the first time, basically. All of it, absolutely, yeah. Right. yeah they, they, and that's a challenge for you guys as casting directors. Mm -hmm. You know, you everything's a challenge for us. Let me look <laughs> for <Yep>. sure. <laughs> And the political aspects of it and the, yeah it's just um it's a lot you know it's just but, finding what they want you know mm -hmm. it's For it's sure. always hard but we love it wesley you are such an awesome guest and i can't wait to see you and get together and have a cup of coffee or something you know right? when you get back to burbank but um you're just, I mean, your words of wisdom are so good for our viewers. So thank you so much for that. We were thank so you. Thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, have I sucked up enough? Do I do I get the job? I I, I don't know what. <laughs> I can sing. I, I can play Wait. tin. I can play tin. I can play younger. Wesley, you only get the job if you like and subscribe to our YouTube show <laughs> and hit the notification bell. <laughs> you know, I knew I knew there was a bribe somewhere. <laughs> See ya.